we see in the context of this gospel something remarkable. It's one of the, the parables, right, of the Lord giving wages to the workers, right? And he gives the same wage to those who enter in the beginning of the day, the middle, at the end, who just have one hour left. They, it's four o'clock in the afternoon, they have one hour left, and the disciples find him. Isn't this true of the church? Whenever you think we have an advantage, the church is the last hour, right? That is the reality. All of us are recipients of this gift to be called into the vineyard at the very last hour. No one has any right to boast, right? Because this is very close to the end. The church has always been in the final hour. A lot of people are freaking out right now. Like, oh, Father, the world's ending. I'm like, yes. <laughs> it has always been ending. <laughs> Ever since the ascension, they said we are in the last hour. So therefore, stay awake. You do not know the day the Lord will come, right? So don't freak out any more than you usually do because the fact is you should always be ready. And if you're always ready, then you're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know the world's a mess. I know that people in the church are a mess. I know people in the world are a mess. I'm not concerned because he told me that already. He already prepared me for that and he lives in me and I'm ready to go, unless I'm not, in which case I need to repent and go to confession and then I get ready to go. No biggie, right? Live for him because those who don't live for him are in big trouble because we have been in the last hour since the very beginning. Since the disciples came to follow him, it has been the final hour. Let no one deceive you. I love this first reading. It's so good. Are there a lot of people trying to deceive you today? Better believe it. Literally every person I can think of on the TV is trying to deceive you. Like uh, most news outlets are trying to deceive you, even some people in the church sadly trying to deceive you, saying that this doesn't mean what you think it means. Oh, it's, everything's fine. Look at this. The person who acts in righteousness is righteous. Right? Let me hear that again. The person who acts in righteousness is righteous. No one who is begotten by God commits sin right? You cannot sin because you're begotten by God. What does that mean? It doesn't mean they're incapable of it. It just means seriously, if you call yourself a child of God and you say it's fine that I commit sins, you are deceived. That is not what children of God do. And people who say, oh, it's totally fine for some people to do X, Y, and Z thing. The church has moved on. No, she has not. Do not let anyone deceive you. Whoever sins belongs to the devil. John, he's just like, did I stutter? <laughs> the devil has sinned from the beginning. The son of God was revealed to destroy the works of the devil. How can we say we can bless sin? How can we say we let people remain in sin? This is crazy. Jesus came to liberate us from sin, and that had a great price. He suffered, agonized, and endured the cross to liberate you and me from sin, not so we could just be like, thanks, Jesus, and go on with our sinful lives. No! Everyone is welcome in the church, but you've got to imitate the master, which means you're going to have to be uncomfortable for him. You're going to have to give up your little thing. You're like, oh, can I just do that? No! <laughs> Every person has to do that. We have to come to the Lord and say, no, I can't just do whatever I want and expect to be a member of the household of God. You can't do that in your family. You can't do that in your marriage. We have to be obedient to one another in love. And so if he is our lover and he has called us to be his children, then we better imitate him. Because listen, the children of God and the children of devil are made plain by what they do. Not by what they say, by what they do. He who acts righteous, it's very clear whose child he is. He's a child of the righteous one. Whoever commits works of iniquity, his father or her father is darkness and evil, the devil, who from the beginning was a liar and a murderer and a thief. So we have to just say very clearly, friends, we must live holy lives. And anybody who says differently is selling you something. Don't believe it. We have to live holy lives because what we're receiving here, especially if you're a Catholic, oh my goodness, if we're a Catholic and we receive the pure and spotless Lamb of God, how can we expect to be anything less than spotless ourselves? We must become what we eat. We must live lives like our Lord. 
just nuts what some people say today. It's crazy. <laughs> what does it mean to be with Jesus? What are you looking for? A lot of people, like, we see this. He asks a great question. What are you looking for when you're following Jesus? Do you want to be popular? Do you want to be in with the guy who's got all the miracles? Do you want to be in when, as James and John wanted to sit on the right and the left and be, like, in control? Do you want that? All of that will be yours, but you got to pass through this first. Ah, I don't know if I want that. That's a little difficult. Welcome to the club. It's difficult. It's difficult. But friends, Jesus doesn't ask you to do that first. He asks you to first come be with him. When you stay with him, when you learn who he is, then you realize he's worth giving your life for. Once you've had an experience and a taste of his love, as the disciples did, they were willing then to give of themselves. So let's, friends, this, in this new year, let's really make it our goal, our aim, to spend time with him, to learn more deeply who he is, to receive the gift of who he is, so that we can be courageous and do the works of God instead of the works of the enemy. Come Holy Spirit.